So now in this video, we're going to look at the NAND logic gate. There's four of them in this integrated circuit, and each one of them has two inputs. The ones that we are not using, we have the inputs tied to the power supply rail. The outputs we are leaving floating. I accidentally plugged the uh, output to a supply rail earlier, and I ran into problems. It was needing a lot of current that it shouldn't have. Luckily, I had current limited, and I don't think anything got fried, but be aware of that. Only connect the inputs directly to supply rail and to be safe you could use resistors but in any case we have both inputs high right now we'll get a closer look at this the oscilloscope is measuring the output and uh, we have zero volts so that's the same as measuring ground it's connecting to ground as good as it can it's not doing it perfectly that's the positive supply rail sorry there's a uh, ground and uh but uh it's doing a pretty good job getting to ground when the output's low and when the output's high it'll be as close to five volts as it can get we're using a 5 volt power supply. So let's get back to the output. That's where those two resistors connect. And uh, this is the only condition we have here. Both or er, yeah, both inputs being high where the output will be low. And uh, again, we're going to look at that closer. If I lower the uh, trim pot voltage below about halfway, and this is not Schmidt trigger. You can see if I get uh, halfway, it's not a definitive uh, area. We can hover in the middle. It's not Schmidt trigger, but uh, it uh, works okay so there we go we're less than halfway and we got one low input and a high output and as I said before it could be uh, one or the other or both right there the only uh, condition where we have a low output is if both inputs are high so we got one low so the outputs gonna be high we need them both high I'll show that again for the output to be low the integrated circuit we were using is the 74HC00. So 7400 means it is a quad two input NAND logic gate right there. And uh, so you gotta look at the uh, last two numbers, 7400 series. Last two numbers tells you uh, what logic gates are in there. And then the high speed CMOS that uh, tells you kind of the transistors that are in there but uh, basically you want to make sure you look at those letters when you look at a data sheet because the voltages and currents you can use and whatnot will vary a bit we have a range of voltages we can use for this particular integrated circuit I think two to six I could be wrong but in any case these integrated circuits generally work with five volts so it's best just to work with that until you learn that you can use more so in any case we got the pin layout right there let's look at the schematic as I said before so we had uh, two inputs. So we used a 1A on top there for that little jumper I was moving, and then 1B, the pin right below that for the uh, trim pot. I'm using a 10 kilo ohm trim pot, had five volts across it. We we're going to supply rails as we saw before. And then we had the output. So we're using one of the four logic gates there, since uh, this schematic tells you the integrated circuit to use. That is the NAND logic gate schematic symbol. So it's an AND gate if you ignore this dot that's an AND gate then when you add the dot that means the output is inverted from an AND gate so the op the output is opposite of what an AND gate would be uh, pretty straightforward so that's uh, really about it we had the LEDs there we saw the blue LED and uh, we switched position there blue LED you slide it up slide that resistor down there but it has to be in that direction anode uh, more positive so actually the anode was lower because I had it to the power supply pin and then the cathode was up higher because I went up and then a resistor came back right there so you always got to make sure they're in the right direction red LED is also the opposite way that I normally uh, put it I had the cathode above the anode anode down there and then a resistor going back to the output but in any case 1000 ohm resistor protecting the blue LED because they're naturally brighter so I lower current so it doesn't get overwhelmingly bright red LED doesn't get as bright so I got a lower a value resistor so more current will go through it light it up a bit the blue LED lit up when the output was low because you can see current flows uh, that way and we saw the voltages red LED lights up when the output is high as close to 5 volts as it can get and uh, this didn't do too bad looks like we got like 4.5 volts when it was high and looks like we got uh, 0 volts uh, pretty nicely when it was low right there so that's really about it NAND is a universal logic gate so there's four of them on here and uh, I think with all four of them, you could make any one of the other uh, logic gates. I could be wrong with that. But if you have enough NAND logic gates, you can make any other logic gate. That's why it's a uh, universal. I think the NOR gate is also universal. But uh, most people generally use NAND. And uh, here is the uh, truth table right there. 
So as we said before, inputs have to be high. In this case, we're going to use one to represent five volts in this circuit. Actually, as you saw with the trim pot, somewhere below uh, 2.5 volts was low. Somewhere above 2.5 volts was high for the most part. But in any case, you need them all high for the output to be low. If any of them are low, any of the inputs, then the output will be high. So now really quick before we get a closer look at the circuit there, I just want to show we only need about 2 milliamps when the output is low right there. That's to power the integrated circuit and everything else. And only around 10 milliamps to power the red uh, LED right there when the output is high. And uh, so I have uh, current limited 20 milliamps. I was hitting that before. I accidentally had the output to a uh, positive supply rail right there. So when it went low, uh, current tried to flow pretty much freely, but I limited it. So that probably saved me from frying the integrated circuit. So that's one reason why I limit current there. So now we'll look at the pin layout and compare it to a closer look there. VCC is the positive supply, as you can see there, and uh, that's going to the top pin. Pin 14 it works its way uh, 1 to 7 there, and then 8 up to 14. That's how you count it. Uh, VCC is positive supply. The CC is uh, standing for collector to a uh, positive supply. So that's an NPN bipolar junction transistor collector. They're always uh, more positive. So... Uh, that's why they write it like that. That's all I'm going to explain that. But uh, ground there, zero volts, a uh, negative supply when you have DC like this. So as I said before, the LEDs. So normally I'm working positive up to negative down. So the long lead, the anode, will be higher. The short lead, the cathode, will be lower. But there you can see we got the cathode directly to ground, the short lead there. And uh, because of how this is laid out, I like to just put the resistor right down there. And uh, so when that's more positive, that comes down there. So I got the longer lead anode lower than the shorter lead, the cathode right there. That is why I did that. And you can probably see red there, that's 220. And uh, you don't see red there, that's a 1000 ohm resistor. So they're going to the third pin down. You should be able to see that pretty good right there. And uh, that is Y right there. They use output for Y a lot. And then we got the inputs and I'm putting them to uh, the supplies right there. Resistor would be safer as I said before, but in any case, that's uh, that's what I did, and uh, luckily I didn't fry it because I did goof it up. So we have the inputs there, and then the trim pot to the power supply on the two ends, and there's a resistive uh, element where the wiper slides along, depending how far along it is, you get a fraction of the voltage. Since this input does not need any current, it just looks at the voltage. That's why you can just put it directly to a supply voltage. And then we got the jumper there that I moved over. So. I think you can see that uh, plenty good. So I'm going to uh, end the video there. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting the screen. And uh, check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.